Hi, good morning, and welcome to our. I got it. <laughs> and welcome to our Easter Sunday service. If you are visiting with us this morning, it is our hope that and trust that this service will bring you a sense of, of comfort. Also, a, an invitation is extended to join us for coffee in the church hall following uh, the service. Also, a warm welcome to those that are watching on live stream and also those that would be watching on YouTube at a later a date. I would also like to welcome our musicians this morning, and we look forward to a wonderful a service. I would also extend our thanks to Ann Gannon and her team for the beautiful flower arrangement that you can see at the front of the sanctuary this morning. And after many years of decorating our church on special Sundays and on other occasions, Anne has decided to step down from this role. And so on behalf of the congregation, I would like to express our appreciation and thanks for your years of dedication and service to this congregation. So Anne, would you like to just stand up? She's shy. And also, as our, as our tradition here at Glenview, uh, flowers to honor our loved ones have been placed at the front of the, the sanctuary. And we, there are tags placed on each of the plants indicating someone who would love to, to receive them. So if you are able to deliver some of these, we would ask that you pick them up at the end of the service in the church hall. And we would ask for your patience in this process. We will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion uh, during the service, and in, as in previous communions, we will be inviting you to come forward to receive the elements. And I would ask those that are sitting in the balcony to come down and come forward uh, to receive uh, the elements this morning. If you are unable to come forward, uh, then I would ask you please let a rusher know, and that usher is, is Bob Gannon, and he will serve you in the pews. And so just sort of give you a quick recap of, of the process is when you come down the center aisle, and then once you receive your elements, you will go back to your pew along the side aisles. There are uh, baskets um, situated so that you can uh, drop in your, your wine uh, glasses. And as required by the Book of Forums, I hereby give notice that the annual general meeting of this congregation will be held next Sunday, April the 7th, 2024, following the service, and a light lunch will be served. Also a reminder that the proceeds from the Easter special envelopes will be allocated to assist Evangel Hall and Portland Place. I would now like to invite Mike Wise to come forward with an announcement. Uh, good morning and happy Easter, everyone. Um, this is a different perspective for me. Normally, I'm up in the balcony live streaming, so it's, it's, it's not used to this view. Uh, I wanted to speak to you about one of our first initiatives to help uh, kick off Glenview's centennial celebrations. Next year, our church turns 100, and we want to create a record of the church for years to come. So that's why our first project will be a special 100th anniversary photo directory. And we last produced a photo directory in 2018. A lot has changed since then, so we need a bit of a refresh. We have a new minister, there's new faces in the congregation, and maybe some new looks for some veteran faces in the congregation. Um, I'm not going to say older faces. Um, this is a tool that will help us come together, even remind us of some names that might have, may have slipped, or the name of that person you met once but can't remember them, and it's too late to ask them again. Um, so I hope this project is something that can bring us together as we start a centennial journey. Uh, we need everyone to take part in this to help make this church directory possible. The more people in the album, the better of a resource it will be for everyone in our congregation and a better record uh, of, of the 100th anniversary going forward. So what is involved with this? Well, once again, we have IPC Canada uh, producing the photo directory for us. They produce the last couple ones for us. They do this each year for hundreds of congreg congregations.
locations across the country. Uh, there's no cost to Glenview for this. Uh, we'd like you to book a photo session, which takes place right here at Glenview. Uh, every household that has their photo taken will receive a free copy of the photo directory. Uh, of course, it's a photography studio. You'll have the chance to purchase a copy of your portrait or family portraits or household portraits or individuals. After your photo's taken, the, the company will let you review your poses and, and purchase anyone you like. Um, however, you're under no obligation uh, to buy anything. Just showing up, taking the photo will get you a free copy of the directory when it's published. Uh, if you have a recent portrait, uh, you can submit that, but there is a cost to cover the, the publication of the directory for you. Uh, when is this happening? Well, IPC Canada will be here in May. We have set aside four dates for photos the, the week after Mother's Day, so May 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th, about 2.30 in the afternoon to 8.30 in the evening. Uh, check your availability in your calendars. We've already started taking bookings. Uh, we're making it really easy to sign up. Uh, there's an online sign-up system. You can see in real time what slots are available. Uh, you can pick your time and even sign up to get email or text message reminders. You can scan a QR code you see on the slides right now. Uh, maybe not do it right now uh, during service. Um, we'll have that same QR code available during coffee hour. I'll also be out there at a table in the coffee hour, very busy coffee hour, uh, to help you to hand out some more information, even help you sign up if you want. Uh, you can also find more information on the website, including the link to the sign-up system. So please check your calendars and we thank you in advance for your, for your participation and support of this very significant project. Thank you. Now I gotta go watch it. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Now let us in silence prepare for worship. I would ask you to join me in the call to worship. A hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, and let us shine with joy. Christ has led us from death to life. Let us live with hope. Christ has led us from earth to heaven. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, and let us worship God together.
Let us pray. Almighty God, on this Easter day, we have come to celebrate the resurrection of your son, Jesus. On this day, we proclaim that he is our Lord and Savior. We rejoice in all that means for us as brothers and sisters in Christ. You gave your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his resurrection, you have delivered us from the power of sin and death. We give you thanks and praise for his love and for your love. On this day of celebration, we pray that all people may enter into the joy and freedom of his risen life. Loving God, we confess that at times we do not share in the joy of the resurrection because we are caught up in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontented, grumbling, and anxious. Forgive us for not sharing in the good news. Forgive us when we find it more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk the joy and encouragement of new life in Christ. Call us back to your ways, O God, to seek hope and reconciliation, restoration and peace. In the name of your risen Son, we pray. Amen. The stone has been rolled away and the tomb has been found empty. We give thanks that we are free to live joyfully, generously, and with great faith. Accept this new life and share it with others.
Our psalm today is Psalm 100, reading responsively. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Our gospel reading today comes from Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, in the hearing of your word proclaimed, open our minds to understanding, our hearts to loving, and our wills to carrying out your mission through your living word, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once there was a new business opening and one of the owner's friends wanted to send flowers for the occasion. They arrived at the new business site and the owner read the card and it said, rest in peace. The owner was angry and called the florist to complain. And after he told the florist the obvious mistake and how angry he was, the florist said, sir, I'm really sorry for the mistake But rather than getting angry, you should imagine this. Somewhere, there is a funeral taking place today, and they have flowers with a note saying, congratulations on your new location. (laughs) But you know what? That really would have been an appropriate card on that first Easter. When the tomb of Jesus was found to be empty and he was no longer there, for he had been risen from the dead. And each of the four Gospels in the Bible share a resurrection story. But today we heard from the Gospel of Matthew, a retelling of the Easter story in a very dramatic way. It involved a shattering earthquake, a rolling stone, an illuminated angel, guards who were scared out of their wits, an empty tomb, and a close encounter with the risen Christ. It would have been an overwhelming experience of sight and sound and emotion 
for the two women who went to the tomb of Jesus on that first Easter morning. They were already grieving the death of Jesus. It had been a difficult few days. And after the death of Jesus on the cross, his body was moved to a tomb owned by Joseph of Arimathea. But the Jewish authorities were afraid that Jesus' disciples would steal his body and claim that he had been raised from the dead. So Pilate gave permission for soldiers to guard the tomb and seal the large stone that was at the entrance. And at dawn on the first day of the week, two women went to visit the tomb where Jesus' body had been laid. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, possibly the mother of another disciple. And suddenly there was a great earthquake and the earth shook and an angel of the Lord rolled away the stone from the entrance of the tomb and then sat down on it. The angel was shining as bright as lightning. And all this made the Roman guard so afraid that they trembled and fell down and became like dead men. And the angel's first words were a simple phrase we often hear in scripture, do not be afraid. As if suddenly, that makes all the fear go away when faced with angels and unexplainable events. And then the angel continued, I know that you were looking for Jesus, the crucified one. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see where he lay and then go and tell the disciples that they will see Jesus in Galilee. And after the women went in and saw the empty tomb, they followed the instructions of the angel and losing no time, they started to run back to the disciples, but they were stopped in their tracks when the risen Jesus met them. Greetings, he said, greetings. The Son of God had been resurrected from the dead, a most amazing event, one we celebrate every Easter something so beyond our limited human understanding. And what are the first words of the resurrected Christ in the Gospel of Matthew but greetings? Greetings, kind of an equivalent of maybe saying, hey there, today. Seems so normal, so understated for the resurrected Son of God. I don't know what I expected. Maybe something with a little more pizzazz, Maybe another light show when the angel appeared, or maybe another earthquake. But the risen Christ came not in a flashy act of magic, or an Oscar-winning performance, or a crash of thunder, or a bolt of lightning. But there Jesus appeared in almost an ordinary way. Greetings. And he had the same instructions as the angel, do not be afraid. Go and tell the disciples what you have seen. And after worshiping at the feet of Jesus, that's what the women did. Just imagine how those women might have felt. Imagine that roller coaster of emotions. They began with grief, then went to surprise, then to fear, and then to joy. Then back to surprise again when they saw Jesus, to fear, and then to joy. And scripture scripture says the women went away in fear and great joy. Fear and great joy. Can those things even go together? Fear and joy. Joy and fear. They do seem like an unlikely combination. Red and green go together. Winter and potholes. Spring and daffodils. Bacon and eggs. Peanut butter and jelly. They all go together. But fear and joy, they're a bit of a strange pair. Can we fully experience both of those emotions at the same time? I suspect that we can and we do. Fear and joy are not quite the opposites that we might believe at first. And if you think about it, it's really not that uncommon to be feeling fear and joy at the same time. Maybe we have scrimped and saved and looked forward to the day when we could buy our own home. We made an offer and it was accepted. And then it hits us that we have committed to paying an incredible amount of money over the next three decades. So we feel both excitement and joy at owning this home, 
as well as a certain amount of fear about the commitment we have made. Maybe we have looked forward to the birth of a child, and seeing that tiny baby, we feel such incredible love and gratitude and joy. But at the same time, as we think about the challenges of parenthood, there may be a bit of fear of the awesome responsibility that we have undertaken. In these and other ways, we have experienced the feelings of fear and joy at the same time. Just like doubt and faith, which can be experienced at the same time, fear and great joy might even be necessary to have a fuller experience of life. And perhaps fear and great joy together could actually help us better understand the mystery, the possibility, and the hope of the resurrection. Just like those two women on the Easter morning with their range of emotions, fear at the earthquake, fear at the angel, fear at the empty tomb, joy at the news that their Lord has come back, raised from the dead, joy as they ran to tell the others, joy at the sight of Jesus right in front of them. And perhaps the mix of emotions for the women and maybe even for us on this Easter Sunday come not only from the resurrection itself, but from what the resurrection means for us today. The world changed on that day. For on that day, God worked in a way that was beyond logic and human understanding. God worked in a way that was not limited to our human expectations. God worked in a way that brought about a new way of living in the present. Easter Day is a time of worship. It's a time to celebrate that God has demonstrated his power in raising Jesus from the grave. The final enemy, death, has been defeated. Easter Day is also the time to meet Jesus here in the ordinary of our lives. We too hear greetings, come and meet me, come and follow. Jesus invites us to face the resurrection. There's new life, not just waiting for us in the future, but here and now. The great preacher and author of the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, Philip Brooks said, the great Easter truth is not that we are to live newly after death, but that we are to be new here and now by the power of the resurrection. And if we are completely honest, we might have mixed feelings about living in new ways, mixed feelings about following the living Christ. We really like a Jesus who taught us about love, but it's not so easy to like a Lord who commands us to love our enemies. We really like a Jesus who helped the unfortunate, but it's not so easy to like a Lord who challenges us to sell all we own and give the money to the poor. We really like a Jesus who includes everybody, who is a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but it's not so easy to like a Lord who encourages us to embrace people we might feel are a little beneath us. We really like a Jesus who calls disciples, but it's not so easy to like a Lord who challenges us to take up our cross, to lose our lives for his sake, and to seek new life through the resurrection. I think there may be a bit of stubbornness in us to want to take the easy parts of following Jesus and living into the promise of the resurrection, to leave behind the challenging parts. And that kind of stubbornness reminds me of a couple who were having some problems in their relationship. They were giving each other the silent treatment. But one day the man realized that he would need his wife to wake him at 5 a.m. for an early morning business flight. And not wanting to be the first to break the silence and lose, he wrote on a piece of paper, please wake me at 5 a.m. And he left the note where he knew that she would find it. The next morning, the man woke up only to discover it was 9 a.m. and he had missed his flight. Furious, he was about to go and see why his wife had not woken him up. 
when he noticed a piece of paper by the bed. And the paper said, it's 5 a.m., wake up. <laughs> now we, too, can be stubborn, not wanting to give in, even to God. But in the Easter story, we are invited to experience the mystery of God, the joy of new life, as well as the fear and messiness of following Jesus for ourselves. New life, resurrected life is unpredictable. It can be scary, but at the same time, it is good news. Easter gives us hope beyond death, hope beyond this world. But not only that, it gives us hope in the here and now. It gives us hope in the face of loss and the difficulties of life. For we all suffer loss, the loss of our youth, the loss of our innocence, the loss of loved ones. We face difficulties, broken relationships and broken dreams. And there are various challenges, a crisis of faith, a time of deep disappointment. But Easter tells us that there is also resurrection. There is new life, not just waiting for us in the future, but here and now. Easter tells us that the power of God is greater than the power of death greater than all our losses and difficulties and challenges in this life. And while Easter brings the mixed feelings of fear and great joy, it allows us to live into the mystery of the resurrection. And in the end, the power and grace and love of God who raised Jesus from the dead is greater than all our fears. And so this morning, the announcement from the angel comes not just to the women at the tomb, it comes to us. The greeting from Jesus comes not only to the women on the way to the disciples, but it comes to us. And even if you are listening to your very first Easter sermon or your 50th Easter sermon, even if the message is the same, even if you still wonder and question and doubt, the truth about the resurrection is that Christ is alive now and is still in the world encountering ordinary people, calling them to follow him. Greetings, do not be afraid. Jesus is alive, he has been raised from the dead. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Christ is risen in your responses, he is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen Thanks be to God. Easter Day celebrates God's most precious gift to us in Christ dying and rising. As we present our gifts this morning, may our generosity reflect God's goodness to us and the hope we have in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Our offerings will now be received.
Let us pray. Ever living God, we offer our gifts with grateful hearts, recognizing how much you have given us in Christ and what that gift has cost. Empower these gifts to spread the hope and joy we feel today in the world you love. In the name of your greatest gift, Jesus Christ, amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites us all who gather here today to share in the feast which he has prepared. Come to this table and encounter the risen Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise.
Let us pray. Living God, creator of heaven and earth, mighty and compassionate, on this most joyous day we offer our thanks and praise to you. We bless you for the world you have made, for your promises to your people, and for the life we know in Christ Jesus, your son. In remembrance we sing. Even when we turned away from you, you never rejected us. You spoke words of mercy and love through the prophets, promising to swallow up death forever and to host a banquet for all people, a feast of life-giving sustenance. In thanksgiving, we sing. Gracious and merciful God, we praise you for Christ Jesus, your word made flesh. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Leading his followers, he guides us. Dying on the cross, he rescues us. Risen from the dead, he gives new life. In celebration, we sing. We ask that you rest your Holy Spirit on the bread and cup as we gather around the table. We come in remembrance and thanksgiving and celebration, ready to be fed and nourished by your love. In the name of our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. On the night that Jesus was arrested, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Each time you eat of this bread, do it in remembrance of me. On the same night, Jesus took the cup and said, this cup is a symbol of the new covenant sealed in my blood. Each time you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Take and eat, take and drink. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of our risen Lord. God of resurrection, hope, you break into our world with the promise of abundant life. And so we pray that our world will come to know you. Break into our church, into places where people are consumed by unhelpful divisions and rigid practices that distract from your purpose. Resurrect, renew, and revive our church. Break into the governance of your world. Stir the minds and hearts of leaders so that they will work for justice and equitable sharing. Where laws are corrupt and people suffer at the hands of harsh rules, resurrect, renew, and revive the leaders of the world. Break into our relationships with one another. Where they are vibrant and life-giving, nurture them. Where they are divided by old hurts, misunderstandings, and are taken for granted, resurrect, renew, and revive our life together. Break into situations of illness, pain, grief, and loss, where people are sick in body, mind, or spirit, and where people mourn, resurrect, renew, and revive our lives. Break into moments of celebration and joy, give us gratitude, the impulse to share, and a spirit of grace and understanding. Resurrect, renew, and revive our souls and spirits. On this joyous Easter day, lead us into the world, strengthen us in faith, guide us in compassion, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We pray all this in the name of our Savior, Christ the Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
April 4th today on this Easter Sunday, living into the joy of new life. And may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you now and forevermore. Amen.
Happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs>